You're listening to a message recorded at Summerstrand United Church. For more information, visit our Facebook page. Good morning, Summerstrand United family. What a privilege again to be together. This is the fifth in the series of the work of the Holy Spirit. And this is the recording for Sunday, the 17th of May, the Sabbath. And just to remind you that this is also a communion service. So at the end of the message, you will need some juice, some wine, if you prefer, or, and some bread to break together, to celebrate uh, the gift of the Lord Jesus and the risen Christ to us. Let's open in a word of prayer. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Rejoice always, pray continually, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. Father, we thank you for this holy day, the Sabbath, the day of rest and restoration, the day of coming together wherever we are in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that the joy of your presence, the joy of the gift of your Holy Spirit is indeed our strength. And we choose, Father, to look to you today. We thank you for the gift of your word to us, which comes alive to us through the work of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, that we are called not to quench the Spirit's fire, but to look to you always for leading and guidance, even today through this service. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We start today in Psalm 106, from verse 4. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation, and join your inheritance in giving praise. Sounds good, doesn't it? We have sinned even as our ancestors did. We have done wrong and acted wickedly. When our ancestors were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses, and they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. See, God saved Israel when they least deserved it. He came and led them. Verse 8, Yet He saved them for His name's sake. You see, it's always been about His kingdom, friends. To make his mighty power known. It's always been about his name and the kingdom of God. He rebuked the Red Sea and it dried up. He led them through the depths as through a desert. Don't you wish they had cell phones back then? And Would you have just loved to have been there and taken a selfie of, of you and your family walking through the Red Sea? Imagine that picture of you and your family and these, these walls of ocean beside you. As God led his people in the Old Testament. You see, God saved Israel out of a life of oppression under Egypt's political leaders who were oppressing them. God pried Israel loose from the grip of the enemy when they were powerless. God gave Israel hope when they were at their most hopeless. God did this out of unconditional love for His people, for the fame of His name. They deserved nothing, but they got everything they needed from their loving Father. A question for us today. Are we in any a different situation today, friends, as 2020 believers who have 2020 vision? Do we not have exactly the same story to tell? 1 Peter 2 verse 10. And we're now moving on into God's leading in the New Testament. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Back to verse 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Haven't we had some absolutely spectacular sunrises in this last season of, of COVID-19? I hope you've been able to get out and get a little bit of early morning exercise from 6 to 9 in the morning as you 
put on your mask and follow sanitation rules, but I hope you've been able to get out within that proximity of, of your area, uh, of where you live, and been able to see the sun rise. And be reminded that the kingdom of God is about, about a new dawn, a new day. It's about an empty tomb and an empty cross. It's about us walking together as friends and family into the light. This is our God. This is our salvation. This is the leading of God among his people. Although we are contained, he is not contained. So what does a believer's life led by the Spirit really look like? And I hope you're in for a really I hope you're ready for a few surprises, friends. Well, firstly, the Spirit leads us into battle. It is a life of peace in conflict. What? You say, Murray, are you crazy? What's going on? Can I say that again, friends? The Spirit of, of God, the Holy Spirit, leads us into battle. It is a life of peace in conflict. And primarily, this battle is between our two natures, the spiritual and the sinful, sometimes called the flesh. Romans 8 verse 6, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Romans 8 verse 6. See, when we become believers, we celebrate a new life, don't we? Don't we? We're, we're a new creation in Christ, but we still struggle with the old nature, often daily. We know the old nature tries to invade the new. It's a battlefield, friends, and particularly it's a battlefield going on in our minds. I'm going to read now from a BBC article dated 17 September 2015. Mozambique has removed its last known landmines after two decades of work to get rid of the explosives. Close to 171,000 landmines were removed, according to the Halo Trust, a British charity that led the clearance. The landmines were left after a long fight for independence, followed by a civil war. Many were planted up until the 1990s. The charity says it is the first large mine contaminated country to be completely cleared of mines. The last mine was removed from, from the base of a railway bridge in the center of the country. Many were planted close to key structures such as dams, bridges and electricity pylons. At the scene, Karen Allen, this BBC News uh, writing in Mozambique, says, You don't forget the sight of someone freshly injured from an anti-personnel landmine blast. These cruel weapons are designed to deny territory to the enemy, in inverted brackets, but invariably it's ordinary civilians, including children, who pay the heaviest price. The US, Russia and China are just some of the countries whose crude calling sorry, crude calling card has been left in Mozambique over the decades. The human toll is hard to quantify, but the Halo Trust told me that hundreds of people have been wounded or killed by mines. Whilst anti-personnel mines rendered huge swaths of land in Mozambique no-go areas following the struggle for independence and a long civil war, what often gets lost in the headlines is the inhibiting effect landmines have on economic development. On the spot where the last known landmine was destroyed by the side of a railway line, I found fresh sprigs of grass poking up through the fertile soil in what is rich sugarcane growing country. Don't be surprised if families quickly lay claim to the land and begin to farm informally, my guide told me. Well friends, we too have a guide. The third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, he settles the conflict going on in our minds, the push and pull between our two natures, the spiritual and the fleshly. So how does the Holy Spirit achieve this for us? How does he clear the landmines? Romans 8 verse 14. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves. So that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. So the Holy Spirit gives us this 
deep assurance of salvation. He clears this landmine of uncertainty. We no longer live in the, with this fear of failure. That's the landmine of anxiety. We have this assurance of adoption. That's the landmine of an insecurity that the Holy Spirit clears. We have this deep assurance that no matter how often we fail, we are still welcome and loved by God. No struggle with sin can ever take away our position won by Jesus on the cross. We no longer have this fear of not succeeding. We accepted who we are. And this worldly wheel of success is not life-giving at all. You're like a hamster caught in that wheel. As believers, we're not always destination-driven on earth. You know, this sort of utopia of success that beckons us on earth. We can be driven by that, can't we? No, we're here to enjoy the journey in the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. The worldly wheel driven by success is not life-giving at all. This is the Holy Spirit's work. Where this life led of deep assurance. It provides peace in the conflicts of life. The fact that we are struggling with our two natures is not a sign of defeat. But in fact, it's a sign of being led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is helping us in this conflict of our two natures. He's clearing away these landmines. He's teaching us to trust Jesus to lead us to places of peace in the conflict. Secondly, the Spirit leads us into the wilderness. It is a life of blessing in struggle. It is a life of blessing in struggle. So question, what are the parallels between the Exodus journey and this Jesus journey. Well, Israel, for Israel, they were led through baptism. Their baptism was the, the Red Sea, being led by God through the Red Sea. The water on both sides, and they're being led through it. And then they led from there into the wilderness. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 2 and verse 15. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. Down to verse 15. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. Notice that in this wilderness, in this struggle, in this battle, God provides. God cares. He leads them to these springs of abundance in a very hostile environment. Well, it's no different for Jesus. Jesus, who we've learned about, this full spirit-filled person. He goes through the waters of baptism. The spirit leads him and then the spirit leads him into the wilderness, into a place of conflict and struggle. Luke chapter 4. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. These were invitations to Jesus to avoid the struggle, to avoid suffering. To avoid the cross. In an instant. That's always a warning sign friends. In an instant. What does the devil have to offer us? In an instant. But for Jesus. No he chose the way of suffering. He chose the way of the cross. And so he put the devil's words behind him. And he stuck to what the father had said. He stuck to what the Holy Spirit was leading him through. 
to the cross, to a place of suffering, to a place of victory and blessing. Forty years of testing for Israel revealed what was in their heart. Complaining, mumbling, and low trust of their leaders and low trust of God. Forty days of testing for Jesus revealed what was in his heart. Purity, love, complete trust, taking the long route of struggle and suffering the way of the cross so that you and I may have redemption. Israel failed the test. Jesus succeeded in the test. Only he can be our true savior. At the end of his time of testing, he proved that he is without sin. And he left that desert struggle and testing with these credentials firmly in place. He is the son of God. He is the son of man. He is the Messiah. He is the only one to take away our sin. And the one who satisfies the justice of God. And he is the only one who is able to give us his true righteousness and he gives it freely friends unconditionally in Romans 8 verse 16 the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God won't you let that sink into your soul now if we are children then we are heirs heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. COVID-19. How is the season of struggle going for you and I? How is the Holy Spirit leading us in and through the struggle? What is the season of struggle revealing about our hearts? Of course, we will have good days and we'll also have bad days. There may be days when there's a sense of depression that enfolds you. A sense of failure, of loneliness, uncertainty, insecurity, especially on those bad days. Well, friends... Your good days, my good days, are an opportunity to come alongside others. For during the season, we should take every call of distress very seriously. Every fear of failure. Every sense of uncertainty, perhaps from a young person, an old person. Think about young people whose dreams have been shattered in this time. They were hoping for academic excellence. And the year has become a struggle. They were hoping to make that team. In fact, some of them were selected for that first team before the COVID-19 struggle began. And they're seeing their dreams of running onto that first team field and passing that rugby ball or um, that netball or, or, or that hockey stick of, of striking in those goals and, and the crowds around and really... You know, experiencing the goodness and the favor, the hope of what this year would bring and, and dreams have been shattered. Think about the, the business owner who's really battling to, to, you know, maybe has gone back to work, but there's just doesn't seem to be people coming to the business. Think about that single parent who's, who, who's at home and trying to make all this work. Well, friends, these, these calls, these, these uh, shattered dreams, these struggles people are going through, we need to respond to them. Who can you and I come alongside? We were uh, in Warmer Township again early on this week. Sia and I were at work there taking gifts that you've given of parcels and masks and love and care. Going down to, towards Victoria Drive side, that drive... A warmer township where the cyclists are, are often attacked. And it's a very poor, impoverished area. It's, a, it's an area of struggle. And, and we, in a, in a little blue shack, met a, a, a mum who, when work happens, is, is a two-day domestic worker across in Lorraine. Well, 
She's not working there now. She has no income. We, we met her daughter there who had a little baby. And this daughter was um, a, a matric student last year in the high school in Warmer Township. She speaks the most beautiful English. And when work happens, she is a, a part-time worker at Krokakama Game Reserve. She has no work now. There's another daughter who's there who has no work now. There are about three or four little children, maybe six of them in a one-room, one or two-room little shack. These are, these are struggling souls in Warmer Township. And we have struggling souls right here in Summerstrand. Young people whose dreams are being shattered. Businessmen, single moms, parents. I, I met a dad who who's, uh, ha, has a business friend who, down on the, on the front who, who was just sort of sitting at home and depressed. And he said, well, I, I'm walking in the morning, so come and walk with me. Let me, let me walk beside you in your struggle." So friends, how is the Holy Spirit leading you and me uh, during this time of, of COVID-19, which is clearly revealing what is in our hearts? So this life led by the Spirit is sometimes a little different to what we expect. But during this lockdown, it really is a magnificent opportunity to put your old self to death once again. In fact, to go a step further and to bury the old self. Maybe during lockdown you can have a little decent burial of your old self. Say farewell, cry, be sad, mourn for 40 days if you want to. But know that the time of that old self invading you in a massive way is over and the Holy Spirit is clearing the landmines that are going on in your mind of insecurity and uncertainty and fear and anxiety. It's time for a new beginning. And we can look forward to peace in the conflict as we're led by the Holy Spirit. We can look forward to blessing in the struggle as we're led by the Holy Spirit. Let's close this message by looking at Galatians chapter 5. Go there with me in your Bible. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you'll be destroyed by each other. What is the season of struggle bringing to the surface in our hearts? Are we always on the attack in our thoughts, our words, our actions? Are we always on the defense in our thoughts? Our words, our actions. I don't know if you're like me. Maybe you've had a little more time in the garden. I've, I've had that and really enjoyed that. Bit of re-sculpturing here and there. But one of the realities about doing more gardening is that when you get to a patch of grass or a, a patch of scrub and so on, and you know, a bed, a flower bed, and you start weeding, what's the reality? You always find more, more and more weeds. Are there, there are always more weeds there than you expect. Once you start really looking and investigating. Well, what an opportunity we have, friends, during this season of lockdown, the season of COVID-19, is to do some good weeding in our lives. Are you always on the attack? Are you always on the defense? Do you take offense too quickly? Well, these weeds need to come out, friends. Down to verse 16 of Galatians 5. I hope you're going there with me in your Bible. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. So here's our, sort of a, a list 
we can go through. You can spend some time here after this message looking at them each carefully. You know what weed has taken root in my life? The first one is sexual immorality. These are the acts of the flesh. Sexual immorality. Impurity and debauchery. Idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred. Discord. Jealousy. Fits of rage. Selfish ambition. Dissensions. Factions and envy. Drunkenness. Orgies and the like. Paul says, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And now the list goes on to the fruit of the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit leads us to produce the fruit of the Spirit. This is the blessing in the conflict. This is the blessing in the struggle. But the fruit of the Spirit, how are you doing with these, friends? This is another list. This is what we want to add to our lives. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the leading of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, that we can look forward to peace in the conflict, to blessing in the struggle. Thank you, Lord, that we can bury the old self and do it properly. It's the new self we want resurrected, not the old. Why don't you take time for a moment as we prepare ourselves for communion. To consider the sin in our lives. What areas of your life is the Holy Spirit pointing to? Are you always on the attack? In your thoughts, words and actions. Are you always on the defense? In your thoughts, words and actions. The Holy Spirit doesn't come to condemn us, only to convict us of our sin, to lead us to blessing, to peace in the struggles of life. Which of the lovely attributes of the fruit is God wanting to add? Is it more love, more joy, more peace, more perseverance? Are you struggling with kindness? Has it just become self-preservation during COVID-19? Is it time to reach out, to pray, to phone, to give your time, your talents, your energy, your resources? We ask you, Holy Spirit, to lead us in the way of peace. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah 8 verse 10. In Jesus' name, Amen. So now we begin to prepare ourselves for Holy Communion on the Sabbath day. And first we're going to say together the Apostles' Creed, which is this profession of faith, which unites us with the body of Christ in the beliefs of being a Christian around the world. As we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now as you have the elements of communion before you, this is the invitation to the Lord's table as we celebrate the gift of Jesus to ourselves and as we unite with all believers in their homes or wherever they may be around the world. We are one in Christ. The invitation is all those who love the Lord Jesus and know Him as Savior are invited to come to this table and join in the sacrament which makes us one in Him. Children are welcome. All are welcome who know Him as Lord and Savior. And if you don't know Him yet as Lord and Savior, then, then begin to prepare your heart as we, we offer our, our sin to Him, and as we repent and turn from sin and towards Him. We are still welcome at this table. It is a table for sinners. Listen now to the words of Paul, telling us how this Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus began. 1 Corinthians 11 For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And now let us do as Jesus did, recognizing that we belong to his body and humbly recalling the sacrifice he made for us. And so let's take the bread and the wine, the juice in our hands, friends. And so now we use this bread and wine, we separate it. For this holy mystery, we separate it away from its ordinary use. As the Lord Jesus thanked his Father, so now let us give thanks. Let us pray. Holy, holy Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed. You are the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon us and these your gifts. And make us share in the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we are welcome at this table, friends. We are welcome as we, as we fight with those two natures. As, as, we, as we try and find peace in the conflict, peace in the struggles of life. We are welcome at this table. Father, we belong to you. Father, we offer ourselves to you. Make us one in your love and ask of us whatever you will. And now we have this beautiful opportunity of singing together this, this prayer the Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Yeah. 
the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. In the same way, he took the cup and said, this is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're proclaiming the death of the Lord Jesus until he returns. And so let's take time now to serve one another, another the bread. And this is the body of Christ. Break the bread. Give it. Share it with one another. And Jesus said, you shall not live on bread alone. Take the bread. Perhaps hold it as we wait to eat together. The bread is broken, representing the broken body of Christ. The grain is crushed to make bread as we remember the crushed body of Christ. But bread also brings life and blessing and abundance. Let's consider those places of blessing Jesus and the Holy Spirit want to lead us to. Let's eat together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your body broken for us. We thank you that you reached out to us in the same way that you reached out to Israel when we least deserve it. We thank you, Lord, that no matter how many times we fail in the struggle between our old nature and our new nature, we are still welcome in the presence of Jesus. Now let's take the wine, the juice, and share with one another. As you take this cup, Lord Jesus, we're so aware of the pouring out of your blood for us. Of you satisfying the wrath and the justice of God on the cross for us. Thank you Jesus that we are accepted because of what you have done for us. We don't have to grovel. We can come in as sons and daughters. And we can come and find healing and wholeness. We can find upliftment for our depression. We can find acceptance for our loneliness. We can find peace for the for the minefield, the battlefield of our minds. Let's drink together of the cup of Christ. Thank you that by your blood we are healed, Lord. We pray for those who are suffering on the front lines, who, who need your healing, who have this virus and perhaps any other illness at this time. Illnesses of the mind, illnesses of the body, illnesses of the soul. Whatever Satan has taken away, Lord, we pray for restoration and renewal. We ask, Holy Spirit, come on us in, in freshness and power and renewal and revival. Oh, how we long for revival in our land. For the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, as in those early years of, of the years of Andrew Murray and those who led the nation in revival. Lord, we pray for your revival. And may it begin with us. And this is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And so, Father, as we have eaten, as we have drunk together of, of your body and your blood, so we are now one and, and our sins are forgiven. And this is the, a new day. The light is shining on us, lifting us out of darkness. Into blessing for the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, perseverance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. You are not defined by your failure. You are defined by the love of Jesus and the complete work of the cross. 
And now let's extend the peace of Christ to each other. Look one another in the eye. Extend love and kindness and forgiveness in our homes. Let's give one another the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. Let's look one another in the eye and say that. We will no longer live with unforgiveness. We will no longer live with envy and jealousy. We will find peace. We will find rest for our souls. We will find blessing. May the God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Amen. Thank you for listening to this Sunday's message. Our sincere thanks to the SUC family for your faithful commitment to monthly tithing, which ensures that worship, ministry and outreach continues. For more information, go to our website www.summerstrandunited.co.za.